Hey everybody, what's up? It's India. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, hello, welcome. This is my YouTube channel where I make videos usually having to do something with modeling and I release them every Tuesday and Friday. So please subscribe to my channel and if you could just give this video a like, it really, really helps my channel just get out there and get seen so that I can make more awesome videos for you guys. I so appreciate all of your support. So with that said, let's get into today's video. So I was just on my computer, you know, surfing the web, and I came across this article. It is an article in Seventeen Magazine where Tyra Banks gives her modeling tips. So we're going to take a look at those together. I haven't read them yet, so we're going to be reading them uh, for the first time together. But I'm just going to share my thoughts on her tips and give you guys any info if I have, like, something to add. Okay, so let's do this thing. Whoop! Okay, first one is, don't be a no-neck monster. Try to elongate your neck for maximum extension. And I totally agree with that one. It's really important as a model to, you know, always have a long neck. You don't want to be, you know, like this with your shoulders up. Um, gives you a double chin and makes you look shorter. Uh, just not flattering. So yes, I totally agree. Nice and long. The only time that I sometimes struggle with this still after nine years of modeling is when you're doing these sort of like sexy over the shoulder ones and it's totally fine to not elongate your neck for those because you're being you know a bit flirtatious whatever um but i always get these crazy wrinkles when i do that pose right here so that's kind of the only time that it's tough to keep your neck looking nice while achieving the pose that you're going for but other than that yes always keep your neck nice and long so that you can look your best and your tallest and most model-esque all right, next one. Do not pose like a hoochie. If you don't know what a hoochie is, er, that's probably best. <laughs> um, well, I think she's talking about like over sexual posing or something. I don't really know what she's trying to say here, but I think she's just suggesting that you keep it more fashion and less like sex, look at my booty, look at my boobies, uh, which you know what? I don't know, I guess it depends on the brand nowadays. I mean, this was written in 2011, so nowadays we have brands where that's what they're going for. So I don't know, I don't really have a lot to say on that one. I just think the fact that she used the word hoochie is kind of funny, but anyways, moving on. Okay, she says, do not be a limp noodle. Always pose with tension in your body completely from head to toe. Oh, H2T. So yeah of course i agree yes it's very important to model from the top of your head to the tip of your toe point those toes elongate those fingers keep yourself nice and tall and long and i don't really know what she's saying about limp noodle but i'm guessing she means like do everything with intention like know where your hands are know where your feet are um, be intentional with your movements uh but i don't know this like gives me the impression that she wants you to be very you know, stiff and posed, but sometimes the most magical moments happen in between poses, which might be a little limp noodly. But anyways, be a limp noodle if you want to, just to make sure that you are modeling from head to toe, as she says, H to T. Okay, next one, she says, do not play it safe and stay in the same pose. Mix it up and innovate poses. Your wildest pose could be the one that's picked. And I could not agree with this more. It's always a bonus at a photo shoot when you are super comfortable with the photographer and they welcome risk taking. Because seriously, sometimes you think something feels super weird or might look weird, but you're just like, I wanna try this. I think it might turn out amazing. And people are blown away. It ends up being your most beautiful shots that you use in your portfolio for years and years and years. But it's so hard sometimes because certain photographers give off this vibe that you can't like be crazy or do something a bit weird which makes you end up playing it quite safe on set but with those kind of more intimidating photographers that like more simple posing sometimes i'll ask them if i can try something and that way it's not like whoa what are you doing but i'm like hey is it okay if i try running into this shot or whatever i don't know what it would be but whatever it is find a way to try those shots that you're envisioning in your head because even though they might look weird on set on camera they might look amazing so you should always give it a go and yes it's very important to keep moving do small little different poses because you might have your hand here or something and everything in your body looks perfect but on your next shot you try turning your hand like that 
and all of a sudden it is the best shot in the entire world. So always keep moving, do little variations of the poses, try different things, and don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. So far her tips are pretty good. Makes sense, she's a freaking legendary supermodel. But okay, let's move into the next one. Do not show up to a photo shoot unless you are clean shaven, have a clean face, and clean hair. So this is back in 2011, and I know now people are much more accepting of your choices with your like body hair and stuff. But out of respect to the client that is paying you to be there, it is generally always a good idea to shave your legs and wash your hair the night before, ideally, and show up with a clean washed face without any product or makeup on it. I mean, you can have your skincare products, but don't come to set with makeup already on. And pro tip, my girl Melissa Korn, makeup artist in Seattle, told me to avoid moisturizers with SPF when you are arriving at a photo shoot because if you're in a studio and there's splash, the SPF in, in the sunscreen will actually reflect and cause a really strong shine on your face. So come to set with a clean washed face, but no SPF and no makeup. And for your hair, like I said, washing it the day before is usually perfect. It's not super clean like you just came out of the shower, but it's also fresh and not disgusting and greasy. I think in your day-to-day -day life, do whatever you want with your body. Do what you want, what you want with my body. But for your photo shoots and for your clients, it is just important to keep your body clean and ready for set. All right, the next one is do not let hating your hair and makeup affect your performance. Model through it. And this is one that I feel so strongly about. I get so annoyed when girls are disappointed with their hair and makeup for a photo shoot. Like if it's a test shoot and you're not getting paid, maybe I understand because you want to look your best and everything. But if you're not crazy about it and you're on a paid shoot for a client, it doesn't really matter what you think. The photo shoot is not for you, it's not about you, it's about the product and the hair and makeup that they gave you is what they envisioned for the shoot, so don't complain. I hated on America's Next Top Model when the girls would like go to the bathroom and fix their makeup and stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? That is so disrespectful and also like, I almost see it as a challenge when I'm like, okay, my hair looks a little off. Let's see if I can still work through this. So if you really don't like your hair and makeup, I would see it more as a challenge and not like something that's going to ruin your performance on the shoot. Speaking of, I do not like how I did my hair today. I wish it was a little bit more voluminous, but whatever, I'm gonna work through it. All right, the next one on her list is do not stare aimlessly when posing. Create intensity for the camera through your eyes. Smize, smile with your eyes. And yes, I absolutely agree. I think the smize is sort of one of my signatures. I love coming through the photograph through my eyes. And I don't really know how to describe how to do it, but I just sort of like, squint, I mean, not even squint, just like flex those eye muscles. It's hard to describe, but I think it really makes a photo come alive and it takes it to the next level. I will say though, there's definitely a time and place for smizing. A lot of more whimsical, airy, girly, feminine shoots, um, my eyes are quite soft and it goes with the look and the feel for the photo shoot. But for like high fashion, edgy shoots, I love that intensity in the eyes. I think when I first started modeling, I would do the intense smiles like all the time and sometimes it didn't fit what we were shooting. So it's important to look at the set, look at what you're wearing and follow the mood board. All right, next we have do not slouch on the runway. Pretend you have a wire through your spine that is pulling you up to the ceiling. And yes, I totally agree. I think if you are a sloucher in your daily life, which a lot of tall, lanky models are, you just have to put that extra work in to really get those shoulders back, stand up tall and elongate your body. It shows confidence, it shows strength, it shows the clothes better. So just definitely do that when you're working. Next we have, do not be forgettable. Make an impression by showing your distinctive personality. And yes, this is even more true now than back in 2011, because I feel like models are being booked not just for being pretty, but also for how they act, their presence on social media, if they're bubbly and easy to work with. And yes, easy to work with. I want to elaborate on that a little bit. I think you should definitely show your personality and be yourself, but don't be like a crazy distraction on set. You definitely want to make the client feel that you are so easy to work with, they can book you again, you get stuff done really quickly. So I think a combination of a good work ethic and good personality on set make for a great model. My goal when I am on a paid shoot is to make that client want to book me again. I have some clients that have been booking me time after time for years. And I think that's because I get the job done in a 
quick manner, I get good shots, and I make good, easy, natural conversation with them so that they enjoy being on set with me. Okay, last one on her list is do request to have your favorite music playing when you do a shoot. The beat will kick your poses up 10 notches. Yeah, totally. You can play whatever you want. Usually the photographer asks you, and I gotta say, if the music is not right, sometimes I struggle. Like, if we're shooting something really edgy and like fierce and intense and they are playing like jazz music, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not working for me. And I totally have different music that I play for different shoots. Like e-commerce, I like to have house music playing because it keeps me going, it keeps the poses moving quickly. It's different for every photo shoot, but whatever you're feeling, whatever is gonna help you get that perfect shot, play that type of music. And pro tip, I always bring a speaker in my purse because if they don't have music on set, like, it's really hard to shoot. So if there's ever a time where there isn't a speaker on set or maybe you're on location somewhere, changing locations all the time, it is really nice to bring a speaker just in case so that you'll always have some awesome music to be playing while you're shooting. It also just makes it like less awkward. <laughs> Seriously, like having music on set makes it much more comfortable for everybody. All right, so that wraps up Tyra's model do's and don'ts. I hope you enjoyed my little notes on each of her tips. Miss Banks is obviously a legendary supermodel, so her tips are super awesome and still work in today's modeling world, nearly 11 years later. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you on Monday for another video. Don't forget to subscribe and click like if you don't mind. It only takes a second. Okay, anyways, bye! Mwah.